Download complete. Initiate playback. Playback. <laughs> Enjoy the show. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Me Time Gamer here. Welcome to another episode of the Me Time Gamer podcast, episode number twenty. Yeah, number twenty. Oh boy, what a week for video game we had this week, guys! Holy smokes, a lot of stuff happened with E3 or the uh, for the unfamiliars, uh, the Electronic uh, Entertainment Expo. Sorry, I just got up, so if I sound a little bit more groggy, I'm recording this in the morning because I'm working nights for today. So it's gonna be a bit uh a bit more slack than usual, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, today is going to be a spe- another special episode. Last week I had my E3 prediction. I won't go over the predictions. I, I think uh, I think you guys can listen to see what I got wrong or right. But this time, this episode is going to be more of a roundup. I'm going to do of E3, some of the best stuff I I enjoyed from the uh, E3 press conferences, except for the Nintendo Digital Revolver and PC Gaming. Those are the only one I didn't watch because. I have really no interest in watching those, so I'm not going to cover those here. So go check out those press conferences if you want to see more. Probably a lot more people are going to give their opinion on that. I decided to cover the four big ones, uh, the ones I was able to watch and found more more entertaining. A bit weird for this year. It feels like everybody had like uh, had great shows, but they were they were like there weren't anything explosive going on. And uh, yeah, so we'll, before we get into uh, the roundup of all the all the uh, press conferences today. I just want to say, if you want to, of course, uh, if you want to help me, uh, if you want to uh, follow the podcast everywhere, you can do so at me to uh, follow everywhere. Me time gamer, uh, uh, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and of course on YouTube. You can also watch the video format of this podcast on youtube.com for slash me time gamer. Uh, and, uh, what else? What else? What else? If you, are, you can also, if you're watching the video format of the podcast, you can also listen to the podcast everywhere. Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, TuneIn, um, also Balado Québec, the, the, that is a French uh, podcast player. You guys can listen to my podcast there. And uh, yeah, that's all the promo I'm going to do for the beginning. So let's jump right into the E3 2017 Roundup. All right, so the first Roundup we're going to start with is Bethesda. So Bethesda is like, we're pretty much... One of the first one that happened during the week. Um, so I'm going to start out. I'm going to go in order, but of course I'm going to mention only the stuff I found interesting. I, I, pretty much what I what I showed you guys in the videos during the in, on on my YouTube page. Uh, all the videos that I showed are going to be the ones that are going to be uh, I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to cover anything. I uh, wasn't sure. I might mention some of it, but we'll see. So yeah, Bethesda is the first one. Bethesda actually this year was a bit. Um, I think because what happened. Is for me personally is they were so big the last two years that this year was actually a bit bit disappointing for me. It's the one I was uh, like the second one I was waiting for after Sony, and I was uh, a bit disappointed. But it, they still had somewhat of a good showing. So the first game on the list is Doom VFR. So they're making a, a sort of a Doom game for VR, which is fun. Like I keep mentioning when I mention a lot in the videos, it's fun seeing companies uh, going in on VR and at least trying to like get this the 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 accessory working and not working, but like uh, to get the thing up and running and um, get it successful. So more people buy it and stuff like that. And doom VR is doom VFR. I don't know what the, the, the F there for fear or whatever. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. I didn't, I didn't look into it, but yeah, doom. And of course the next thing I'm on the list after that, it's fallout Four VR, which they talked about last year. And they definitely, um, it looks pretty great. It looks well, basically the game in VR. So we were definitely people are going to be enjoying that. Hopefully, um, uh, that, I don't have much to say about VR because I don't have one, so it's hard to talk about it. But those games definitely look interesting. I wonder. One thing I wonder is if they, um, if there, if you already have Fallout 4 on, let's say, on the PS4. Maybe, maybe it's coming on PS4. I don't know. Uh, it might be just a, an Oculus or a Vive exclusive for now or something like that. I have no clue. But we'll definitely have to check that out. Then uh, the next thing for Bethesda that uh, caught my attention 
was the Creation Club. Now, the Creation Club, if you don't know what it, if you haven't had a chance to look it out uh, or check it out, uh, the Creation Club pretty much was a way to that um, modders sort of. <laughs> It's sort of the way um, modders can get involved with Bethesda itself to create new, uh, new, never-before-seen mods uh, for uh, Fallout and Skyrim. And basically, it's going to be it's going to be certified mods that that will come to consoles. I'm assuming because why why would you do this Creation Club for PC when they're they they have unlimited mods and they don't need the input of uh, Bethesda on that. Uh, yeah, Creation Club's gonna be for Xbox One and PS4, basically. So the community creates mods and then send it, sends it to Creation Club. Now here's the little the little fucking uh, thing I didn't like about it is they were talking about credits. So, but if you guys remember, Bethesda tried this a couple years uh, about a couple years back. I don't remember what year it was, but they tried to implement uh, paid mods to help the creator of the mods make money. But that went on Steam, and then that went down the drain. Pill quick, people were not happy about paying mod and within a week Bethesda stopped doing that immediately and now here they're talking about credit of course I, I read about uh, I read in the internet about uh, they were talking about uh, like what, what the way you explain it is like they're trying to they're trying to say this, oh no it's not credit but it actually is it's it's a bit weird so look out for that I'm 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 how, how would I say I'm caution, cautionly op optimistic about it because I do want more content for Fallout 4, that's for sure. But am I willing to pay, like, I don't know, five bucks a mod? No, I don't know. Already the selection of mod on the PS4 is pretty sketchy, right? Well, I did a couple of videos on it, the the mods on PS4, which I would have done more, but they're actually... I couldn't find any more interesting to, to load up on, on the PS4, so... That's why I stopped making those videos, because I couldn't find any good one. So hopefully the Creation Club will bring more content. It's just I'm... Uh, we I, I, we need more information on what this credit system is. Hopefully, if it's paying for mods, then I think you're going to lose the thing. I think they're trying to assume maybe that console player will pay for them since they don't have really a choice uh, because they have to go through Bethesda to, to get the mods. Not They can't just import mods from the web or stuff like that. Then after that, we got two new announced games from Bethesda. These are the uh, that I found interesting was Evil Within 2. Of course, uh, the first one was pretty great. I only had a chance to play... Uh, couple hours of it but i did i did find it interesting uh the only thing for me i don't know it got a bit weird after a while just not not necessarily like scary weird but more like uh the whole uh the whole like not magic stuff but like supernatural thing going on with the main character and i think evil within two seems like it's going to be more of the same so we'll have to see definitely what that is and then after that we had Wolfenstein 2. So Wolfenstein 2, of course I played again Wolfenstein 1, uh, the New Order. I played I played uh, about four or five hours of it. I didn't get a chance to finish it. But uh, the first game was awesome. This seems like a lot more of what we need. Shooting Nazis in the face, why not? It's always a good thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it seems it seems like this in this case we're seeing uh, what happens uh, in an alternate future if uh, the Nazis took over the U.S. And how like propaganda runs wild and stuff like that, and people are just going day to day uh, with the Nazi being in their pre present everywhere. So th it's definitely going to be something interesting to look at. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it for Bethesda. I don't have much more to say. Now we'll just move on to Ubisoft's press conference. Uh, Ubisoft's press conference. Press conference. Uh, well, that started off pretty, pretty not too bad with the crew too. I don't know what the re I don't. The pre I feel like the reception of the first game wasn't wasn't too big, and I guess they. But I guess it Warren it was big enough to get a second one, which this time in involves more. And instead of just being cars and I, I think was there motorcycles. Or dirt bikes in the la in the first one, I don't remember. This one, it, this one, it also involves boat cars, and it seems like the way they were showing off the game, like the first crew was all across north, uh, across the U.S. This time, for some reason, it seems like it's all across the world. So we'll have to definitely see that what it what it gives out. I didn't enjoy that that aspect of the cr the first crew, um, of the first crew. Yeah, that traveling, like you have to drive to travel across the across the country to, to go do different races and different level races and stuff like that, that was pretty interesting uh just some of the racing in the first one felt kind of weird the, the handling of the cars and stuff like that so the next game i have on my list is transference uh that's a vr well i'm assuming it's a vr game because they, they they say vr so many times in that little thing with uh elijah wood there 
Um, it seemed pretty interesting. I don't know much more about it. It seems like a spooky kind of thing, like a brainwashing type thing. So it's, it's definitely going to seem interesting once it come, we get more information on it and stuff like that. And of course, the next game on the list, we have Skull and Bones, which is sort it's a pirate, basically, uh, you're, basically, it seems like it takes the, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the ship fighting aspect from Black Flag, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and, um, just just shows us off, showed it showed it off uh, makes it even bigger uh, uh there's a couple pirate games on piece on the pc itself but uh yeah this seems like a different take you have multiple ships run it's basically like a it's a pvp you play f uh, it seems uh, the demo they showed it's 5v5 you're controlling different type of ships like ra ramming ships uh tougher ships that can withstand more damage and all those kind of things so Skull and Bones does seem interesting. It's a different uh, different take on uh, player versus player. There's not a lot of pirate uh, ship games out there, so I guess we can't wait to see. It's uh, it's something new for consoles, of course. It's, I don't it's, it's like there's CSE coming out, but I guess this is like Ubisoft's response to make it more mass market instead of it being stuck on um, on one console. Then of course my little baby that I was waiting for from Ubisoft is Far Cry 5. That game looks awesome. It takes a lot. It seems to take a, co a couple aspects from the uh, from the div uh, not the division uh, Wildlands. The way you have to tag and you can tell your uh, your gun for how how to uh, to uh, snipe somebody out. It doesn't have the same interface, of course. Thank God, because it's not a military tactic. It's not a tactical shooter. But uh, the game does look very interesting. I like like I like the way you have to the mission the the trailer they showed at the Ubisoft press conference. Uh, it was. It looked very, very interesting. Sorry, I'm saying very interesting a lot. Uh, it, 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 see, it was very cool on the demo. You see, like a preacher talking, uh, sort of uh, talking to a sinner in front of him, and there's people like getting knocked out and killed and, and all that stuff. And you have to go in and kill the pre the, the, the guy preaching in, on the street there, and all the, his, I guess, his enforcers and stuff like that. So, and you you can use your dog. You can use your gun fire. I can't wait to see. Uh, how many people you can have with you at once that's going to be interesting i don't know if it's one one at a time uh we'll have to see from there and of course that one of the last things i i we i noted from uh ubisoft was beyond good and evil 2 a lot of people were waiting for that game a lot of people were complaining about um because i know some people they were talking about that they weren't going to be at e3 and stuff like that and yeah it's a bit it, it's a bit and then yeah they, they were saying they weren't going on e3 this year they weren't showing anything for this game and then after that they they they, they were the, like the final psf resistance of ubisoft's conference and a lot of people were giving them shit because they lied to the media but like you have to think about it as the developer's stand of stand point of view because you, if you want to end if you you have, if you have a big game to announce and you, you don't want to ruin the surprise just by telling uh, oh yeah, we we I can't talk about it right now. So uh, we we uh, I don't we're, I can't tell if we're running the show or not. So you're sort of ruining it because people are going to assume that you're going to be there and stuff like that. So yeah, I know I'm not explaining it very well, but it I feel I feel Ubisoft did, the guys that uh, Ubisoft the well the creators of the game did the right thing. Of course you you, you want to keep the reveal. Of course not a, in every case it's good to lie. Like if you have something hidden or, or like down the pipe down the down the uh, down the road and stuff like that but in this case you don't want to ruin uh, like a press conference and show just because some media wants some extra thing right like it's not the the company doesn't owe the media anything like i'm not uh, i don't find it fair to a, a game dev that you you would go not not necessarily harass them but like give them shit for not telling you you have a game coming up that's not their job at the end of the day they're there to create a game and they're there to create hype for their game so the game Become, like becomes popular and stuff like that so um but onto the game beyond good and evil 2 i haven't played the first one so it's hard it's hard for me to explain but the game did look it's all the see the trailer was all cg but the game did look very interesting this this whole human and animal sort of world lived together the the monkey was pretty funny he had a funny uh british i'm not too i'm pretty sure it's british accent there it was a very co comedic uh character in the trailer and yeah, I can't wait to see more. It's my—I don't know if my might be a game that interests me. I might have to go back and play the first one to see if it relates in any way. Uh, people do say I think it's a prequel to the first one, so it might just work out that you don't need to play the first one. 
And uh, that's it for Ubisoft. I didn't talk about Assassin's Creed. I'm going to talk about it in the Microsoft one, and that's the one we're talking about next. So Microsoft had a... The, the, this one is a bit bigger. Uh, so we had... from Microsoft started off with the Xbox One X. That's the name of their Project Scorpio. Uh, seem interesting. Again, they, they mentioned the fucking most powerful console out there every time over and over and over uh, and stuff like that. And it was like they were showing a lot of the... Oh, the game's gonna play for true 4K, 60 frame per second. But then they only showed Forza playing at uh, 60 frame per second, and all the other game they were they weren't allowed to. They weren't speculating if it was gonna play any faster than that or not. And yeah, the the the, the Xbox One X does seem interesting. It's uh, it does seem nice. It's the console's a lot smaller than their their One S, if I remember correctly. So I know the One S does. Uh, the the power bars in the console, so I can't wait to see if this one's gonna be in the console because it's a way more powerful console. It actually has like its own design water cooling system or something like that. It's not it's it's a bit weird. It's not actual like like an, a PC most of the time water cooling section little hose not little hose but lines and stuff like that that cool around the CPU or something like that. This one's not the same. It seems like a, it's a chip. It's like a small little square chip on top of the uh, of the motherboard of the uh, CPU. To cool it down, so uh, I guess we won't have uh, the red light of death or the red ring of death this time around for this because it's a. Uh, of course, they 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 went they went talking about their teraflops again. Uh, I don't know how really saying that over and over again really impacts like oh my god that's gonna be awesome what I'm gonna buy that right away. I don't know how much that actually influences people thinking of buying it. And it's a uh, it's gonna be a hard sell. Of course, my Xbox is not as far behind Sony on this for the console sale so it's a bit hard hopefully this is going to be their like their go-to console they did they are selling it 500 bucks us so i'm assuming like uh 600 bucks canadian so that's for me that's like even like a big no-no because 600 bucks for a console and or is it actually worth that extra like right now you can get an xbox one for like three uh, 300 or two 350 and paying that extra fucking for for me or for in canada Paying that extra 250 300 dollars for a slight a slight upgrade to maybe sometimes play 4K and maybe get sometimes for 60 frames. Which honestly, for I, I would say for a big majority of gamers out there playing a game and right now in 4K and 60 frames per second is not always the main goal. The main goal has to be story, has to be uh, the impact of the game, it has to be mechanics first. Graphics, yes, graphics are always nice. But make a game 1080p, 60 frames per second. That's fine. No, not a lot of people right now. A minimum of people have 4K. I know you're. Uh, a minimum of people have 4K monitors or TVs and stuff like that. So it's a bit. I know this is more like future proofing, but I'm. You have to assume this is like their their like their middle their middle iteration right before I, I guess the next big main Xbox. And is it really worth the investment? so down so then after that in two three years from now they get out the next generation of xbox and ps5 or whatever it is and uh yeah so we'll have to see what people say once the people get in their hands coming out in november something and uh yeah so the next game on microsoft uh, then so now we're getting to games sorry now we get into games with microsoft microsoft actually surprised me with uh, the next the first game uh, i think it was the first game they showed was micro metro metro Ex exodus so I played a bit of the first game of Metro, and I did I did really enjoy the the atmosphere in that game. It was so fun to play. And then when when I saw the trailer for this, I did guess it at the beginning of the trailer because it didn't. Not a lot of people talked about Metro having a new sequel unless I didn't hear about it somewhere. But when I saw that trailer, that trailer did look really cool. Uh, that whole underground stuff, then going up to the surface but this time around it's weird because this time around, this time around when he goes to the surface he actually takes his mask off but in the other games when you went to the surface you have to put a mask on so i don't know what happened there i don't know if something that resolves in the second one i haven't had a chance to play the second metro but uh, yeah that's a real game that it surprised me it looked very interesting so i'm gonna I'm probably have to try to play the first one first and second one before uh, this one comes out to see if it, uh, if it seems appealing for me to try out then the next one was, was Assassin's Creed uh, Origin, which uh, Ubisoft finally, no surprise to anybody, it leaked so many weeks again. I don't know why Ubisoft has so many problems trying to keep Assassin's Creed or their Assassin's Creed game or any game 
under wraps right before an announcement or something like that. Every time it happens. And of course, this this one, the title and some some uh, screenshot got out. And uh, yeah, the game does look very interesting. It seems to um, it's, it's it's taking us back to Egypt, of course. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, it, it seems to imp improve on the mechanics. Egypt. Uh, it's it, like I was saying in the trailer. Can't wait to see because in the parts of the videos they show it there there was there, there didn't seem to be a lot of uh, like tall buildings to go like to to climb and stuff like that. So it's a bit. We're, can't wait to see what the mechanics are going to be doing for that. Um, there's an eagle view type thing like there was in Far Cry Primal going on, which looks pretty fun. Uh, I talked a bit more in the video about how how it's cool that they're actually. What Ubisoft is doing, what they seem to be doing, is taking stuff from their, their different games they have and implementing them in their other games, and make, making the game a more complete thing at the end of the day. And uh, for Assassin's Creed, uh, yeah, so I can't, I can't wait to see. Like Assassin's Creed Syndicate was pretty good, so this is their next iteration. They took a long, uh, about a year and a half, two year break on this one, so can't wait to see what they're gonna give out. Hopefully, they they, they were able to make something great to bring the masses back to Assassin's Creed. The next game on the list I did write down was from Microsoft. It was Player Un Player Unknown's Battleground. Uh, this seemed pretty interesting. If you guys don't know what it, what it is, definitely it's a PC game right now. It's an early access, if I remember. Uh, basically, it's a uh, it's, uh, it takes place on an island. A hundred people drop in. It's you can play uh, one versus all or one v one v one or whatever, and then uh, you or you can play player team of two or team of five or whatever. And then after that, you have to kill and be the last team standing, pretty much. And so that seems pretty interesting. And Microsoft announced that it was uh, being uh, the word they kept fucking using was getting on my nerve. There was a, a console a console launch exclusive. So it's coming to Xbox, of course. I did read in a little bit further uh, that it, it was coming in to uh, to PS4 of an af a bit later after they just uh, Microsoft has the the launch exclusive for it. So yeah, it is coming to PS4. So definitely, if you want to know more information about this game, this game's been out for about three, four months now, I think, if I remember correctly. And uh, definitely go check out. It's one of the most popular t games on Twitch right now. The concept is fun. It, it takes the concept from like DayZ, Arma 3, and uh, H1Z1 pretty much, and pretty much improves on it a bit more, I would say, what seems from the, the tr streams I've watched. And of course, one of the I think one of the biggest game I was waiting for on uh, one of the biggest games, sorry, just I wrote more stuff down. Yeah, one of the biggest game I was waiting for from uh, from Microsoft was State of Decay 2. They finally showed us that. I I don't remember if they showed us. Uh, they they, sh they talked about a release date yet. I'm not 100 sure. I think they did. Maybe 2018. I don't remember. Yeah, but State of Decay 2. It's uh, the second, of course, after State of Decay. They seem to very to upgrade a lot of the mechanics in this to improve to make it a lot better. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's one of those games. I, I enjoyed the first one when I played it. I finished the first one. It was so fun to play. Oh, uh, the concept of having multiple ca controllable characters with permadeath. Like, if one of your characters dies, you can't play him anymore. Move on to the next character. And so on, keeping, always keeping the balance of the mood of your characters in your base. Uh, fortifying your base and stuff like that. Uh, creating, like, medical bays and... and uh, all those nice things and just moving bases to like getting a bigger bigger home base or whatever you want to call it and uh yeah that seems very interesting it seems more uh more of that in this in this game uh hopefully they can implement it even better make it an even longer game an even more fleshed out game and uh, when you look at the end of the trailer they show a very gruesome death from one of the big big fucking zombies there in the game of course, finally, there's a, a Cuphead was shown next in the in the uh, Microsoft press conference. Uh, finally, and then and then it's coming out in September sometime. So finally, it's it's fun. They finally have a release date. I know a lot of people were giving them shit because it seems like we've seen this for three E3s in a row now, and they they never released date. They had a problem with the game or something like that, and they stopped talking about it for a while. And uh, next game was Crackdown Three. Now Crackdown is not a game I ever played, but uh, it seemed very interesting. I like the whole aspect of world, like the full destructible world. Uh, I didn't get quite the concept of the trailer, though. It seems like uh, you had Terry Crews at the beginning, which was really hilarious. And uh, 
the, the concept of the game looks pretty cool. I can't wait to see more of the game. I really don't know anything about the game, but I, the reason why I left it, I, I, I left it in my preview, my uh, roundup trail, um, video of the Microsoft press conference because it looked interesting. I like, I like the, the shooting style of it. I like the art style of it. So yeah. And, uh, one, another game I had on the list was Ashen. I uh, seem, it, it seems like one of those, uh, I, I tried to talk, I tried to explain it on the, on the video it's on the press conference video but it reminds me a bit of one of those unity game like the every you have two you play a two two characters they ha don't have any face it seems like a dungeon crawling type game uh it got my attention i don't know what else to say it's pretty like it's it seems like a sword and power adventure a, a, a sword and magic adventure sort of thing so we're definitely gonna have to, have to see more of that i got two more things on the list from microsoft was uh, we Square Enix finally announced uh, a prequel to Life is Strange called Life is Strange Before the Storm. I think we're going to see more of the aspect what happened before, um, uh, was it Max gets uh, her powers or something like that? I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I'm definitely going to be playing the, since uh, Life is Strange, the first five episodes are free right now on the PS4. Definitely going to be playing that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and I came with this coming out in August, if I remember correctly. So definitely going to be checking that out. Of course, we have Shadow of War. Uh, so that's going to be fun. That's coming out to all console, of course. But they showed more about how the Nemesis system works, how taking a bait, how the new people like uh, how to how to how to rev how some of the how the how some of the characters in the game, like some of the people you defeat, uh, can survive your attack and come back to hunt to hunt you down and stuff like that. That's pretty fun. And how you can recruit some of the um, the the uh, uh, what's the name of them? Why am I forgetting it right now? <laughs> Sorry, I'm still a bit tired. Uh, yeah, Shadow of War. Uh, they show yeah how you can recruit some of the um, ogre, not ogres. Why am I forgetting the, the name now? Anyway, you guys get what I mean. So they showed a lot more of that aspect. Uh, the game was pushed back until October, so we're gonna have to see that when it comes out. It's uh, it seems a lot, just a lot more of Shadow of Mordor. So. Uh, but this time you're taking over fortresses in the game and you're managing your you have it sort of managing your troop before you attack fortresses and stuff so we'll have to see that when it comes out and that was it for microsoft's press conference that's what hold, held my attention then we move on to the um, to the final press conference is sony's press conference no sony's press conference was a bit like bethesda's one where it, they showed just game 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 they had they didn't stop and uh, the first game on the list was uh, of course uh, lost legacy uh, that game's coming out this year in November, if I can remember correctly. Uh, Chloe, this is Chloe and Nadine. Uh, it's fun because the trailer showed them, like, it seems like an, more of what we like about Uncharted. Um, it's, it seems that there's a slight slight upgrade in the graphics. Um, they showed a lot of uh, the game, like how the two characters are going to butt heads in some situations and work try to work together in some situation. Uh, to try to find what they're looking for so that's gonna be very interesting coming out in November it's it's more uncharted so that's gonna be very fun then after that's a big surprise to everybody uh, the guys at gorilla gorilla games announced a DLC for uh, horizon zero dawn called the frozen wild so that's gonna be fun it's a new new map that we're unlocking new characters new uh, I think they were saying new mo new uh, robots new robot monsters too so that's gonna be pretty fun a lot more of what we liked about horizon uh, more more story aspect to the game and uh, yeah so I, I'm still playing a horizon right now I haven't finished it right now I'm probably gonna try to finish it very soon so in November when this comes out it's gonna be very very fun to play uh, then you have days gone the one I was waiting for the most I would say in here and uh, there's I think there's one more uh, no. oh well the, yeah sorry uh, yeah days gone they showed a lot more of the gameplay this time around instead of being uh, all a uh, big mass uh, zombie attack coming down on you and you trying to survive. This time it was more like uh, getting away from a pack of wild dogs um, and then look get, being attacked by marauders. Or these are actually like I, I would I would say explain to them being like uh, raiders in Fallout sort of They're just assholes trying to survive and getting trying to get everything they can. Uh, so you're trying to defend yourself on them, and then you're trying, you're you're out on a mission trying to save one of your, I guess, one of your buddies from your camp, and it goes from there. So definitely go check out that. Uh, they showed actually uh, when when they showed at the conference, they actually also in their private demo they showed a different uh, 
a different alternative way of playing with the same sequence they played so that was pretty interesting to see i did watch the video on the playstation uh, uh, youtube page that was pretty fun of course big surprise also they 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 showed off uh, skyrim vr which didn't, they didn't talk about at the bethesda press conference which was pretty weird i found they didn't they didn't reveal because it is a big reveal so more Skyrim, you guys, if you guys are not tired of Skyrim, you're gonna get more of it in VR this time. So that's fun to see. That was in the PS for the PS4 Pro, and of course then we have a we had a we had a sequence of uh, VR games. The VR games that uh, caught my attention the most, uh, of course, Skyrim one. And then we had uh, the Im, uh, the Impatient, uh, which seems like you're you're in a, an insane asylum or something. Then you have to get out or something like that. Which the graphic styles seem amazing. The, the concept of it looked amazing. So it looks like a very cool experience. Sorry. I have the burps now. I've been talking continuously too long. I need to drink something, but I don't. I didn't drink. I didn't bring any water with me. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, in, the impatient looked very interesting. It, it, I don't think it had an announcement date. And then for and then in more VR, you had Bravo Team from the same team that make that made Impatient, which seems like a first-person shooter sort of Call of Duty style game. Uh, the, another thing that caught my attention. Uh, of course, after that, you had God of War, with, which gave us more of the actual gameplay, fighting mechanics, and a bit of the story aspect of it. Look, uh, once again, it looked very well done. It looked very interesting. It caught my attention for sure. I've never played the original God of Wars, but this one definitely is going to be a must once it comes out. I don't remember. I think it was also announced only for next year sometime. Of course, another game I've been waiting for impatiently was Detroit Become Human. Uh, we see we, we finally got more uh, uh, actual gameplay of it. Uh, it's you uh, you playing as one of the characters. I think there's five different characters you'll play in the game, and this is one of them where you have to liberate uh, liberate some droid androids uh, from the company, whatever company that makes them. Uh, you have to let, set them free and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot more of what we enjoyed. It showed, like, different paths of the game, how you can play, like, violent, you can play pacifist, passive, uh, what's the word here? You, uh, pass, passive, let, 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 let's use that one. And, uh, yeah, so it seems for, the, the, the main guy is, the main guy that you saw in that video is actually an actor, and I, I found that, I, I, the, the, the graphics in the games are so good, and the, I guess the face tracking is so good, uh, the, whatever equipment they're using that, it was easy to recognize which actor it was. It was an actor from uh, the only way I, one I know him from is from Grey's Anatomy because my wife was watching that show. I remember seeing that that show. Uh, that I remember seeing him in that show. Uh, and uh, yeah, and to round up, the, I think that's going to be it for Detroit. There's not much more I can see. Definitely, all the games I'm talking about. Hopefully, I'm putting the all the trailers. Well, the trailers as I'm talking about them right now. Uh, while on the video format at youtube.com for slash me time gamer and of course the last game they sony talked about was spider-man now spider-man did not have i think it was 2018 release date i'm not sure uh they didn't spe specify anything but this time around we had we had a lot of gameplay uh, a lot of qtes too i don't know if it's going to be a big part of the main missions of the games and stuff like that but i, I wish they should they would have shown a bit the game the trailer the, the gameplay itself was really fun to look at. It had like a Batman, f Batman fighting mechanics for sh uh, look to it. Uh, it uh, what else? Uh, I wish they showed more of like the flying around the city freely. See what that that would look like. And uh, yeah, but I was still impressed by the game. It did look very interesting. And yeah, that's all I had for the press conference for today. Alright, so that's it for this episode of the Me Time Gamer Podcast, episode number twenty. Sorry today I didn't have I didn't have time to research any kickstarting it or stuff like that. There's uh there's not news all the news is all about uh E3 this time around. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the roundup. Of course if you wanna if you wanna see more of these episodes, it's always helpful if you support the podcast if you wanna see more great podcasts like this one. Hopefully it's great. Uh, sorry if I'm, I was a bit groggy, of course, like I said at the beginning. Of course, if you want to support the podcast, you can always share the podcast share, share the podcast everywhere on all the social media. And the, podca the podcast is available everywhere. Uh, Me Time Gamer, uh, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. 
And also, if you want to support uh, even more of the podcast, you can go to patreon.com forward slash me time gamer where you can support money wise. Uh, the tier, I only have one tier of three dollars if you guys are just to support and just to give your give the chip in to, to try to support the podcast and all the content I produce over on YouTube and all the other social media, all other social media. Of course, if you want to get in contact with me, you can do so at podcast at metimegamer.com or if you want to do sponsor sponsorship in the podcast, you can do so at contact at metimegamer. Uh, metime at me time, uh, sorry, contact at metimegamer.com. Sorry, I'm just getting, I'm just very tired. And uh, what else, what else, what else? I think that's going to be it. Uh, is there anything else? Of course, if you want to listen, if you're watching the video, of course, if you are watching on the video format, you can watch, you can uh, you can listen to the podcast version. All the other episodes are on Stitcher, iTunes, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Balado Quebec, and every other place that takes my RSS feed. And yeah, so thank you so much, guys, for watching or listening, and I will see you on the next episode. Keep on keeping on. <laughs>